Hello everyone, this is Dr. Wallace. Literature reviews are an important component of every research proposal and study. I want to take a few minutes and break down a literature review into some easy to understand steps. Let's begin by first defining a literature review. Put simply, I view a literature review as an analysis and evaluation of the existing body of knowledge on the topic of a proposed research study. If you've viewed any of my other lessons on research methodology topics, you know I like to break the concepts down into easy to understand steps by working from examples. Since a literature review looks at existing knowledge about our research topic, we need to begin with the research topic. Let's do this by defining not only our research topic, but also the research question and hypothesis. Bear with me for a moment and I'll explain why these are also important. The topic of our example research study will be the impact of childhood role models on decisions to commit deviant acts as an adult. Our research question will be, do positive childhood role models decrease the chances of an individual committing deviant acts as an adult? And our hypothesis will be individuals with positive role models as a child are less likely to commit deviant acts as an adult than those with negative or no role models. I mentioned a moment ago that we need these three items to find in our example before starting our literature review. Here's the reason why. We need a baseline from which to begin our literature search. The topic, research question, and hypothesis are a great place to look for key terms to conduct our search. When I look at these three components in our example, the following terms jump out at me. Influence of childhood role models, decisions to commit deviant acts, and positive versus negative role models. These are great terms to begin our literature search with and hopefully they will lead us to others as we start reviewing the material we locate. Since my goal is to help you understand a literature review, I'm going to fast forward now and assume I have completed my search for existing information on our sample research topic. At this point, I should have a lot of articles that need to be included in my literature review. Well, at least hopefully I do. Now I am ready to move to the next step. I'm going to look for common themes in the articles I located. As I begin reading the articles I located, common themes start to emerge. I notice that common themes in the material I found include drivers to commit deviance, the influence of role models, and family structure or type of family. I personally think that if you can organize your material into three good theme categories, then you're on the right track to creating a good literature review. Now that I have my themes identified, I can move my articles into their group. Once the articles are within their theme group, I'll need to organize them in a way that makes sense, but that is typically not as challenging as getting them into theme groups. Now, I'm ready to start writing my literature review. I want to begin my literature review with an introduction section that briefly explains my research topic, the types of resources I looked at when searching for information, and anything else that might be relevant. I then discuss my information by the themes or groups I identified earlier. I want to wrap up my literature review with a short conclusion where I highlight any major points that might have emerged. Now that I have discussed the concepts, let's look at an example paragraph for a literature review. This is an actual paragraph taken from a literature review that was part of a research study I conducted on intimate partner violence. I won't bore you by reading the entire paragraph, but let me highlight some of the features to help you understand what you need to include when writing a literature review. You will notice I have succinctly described the type of research that was conducted, highlighted the findings of the study, and demonstrated how this information was relevant to my study. Near the end of the paragraph, I also tied this article to another article I was reviewing. This leads me to my next point. It is important to weave your articles together within a specific topic in a logical manner. Using good transition statements is the most effective way I have seen for accomplishing this task. Let me take a moment and share some examples of good transition statements. Here are some examples of effective transition statements I have used when trying to weave together different articles within the same theme group. You will notice that with the first two examples, I am associating articles that appear to have a similar view on an issue. However, 
The last two examples demonstrate ways to transition between articles that have differing viewpoints on an issue. Remember, these are just examples. I am sure you'll come up with some good ones on your own. I want to conclude this lesson by mentioning a mistake I see quite often. A literature review is not an annotated bibliography. These are in two entirely different ways of presenting existing information on a topic. Unlike a literature review where we divide our material by themes, an annotated bibliography reviews each article individually. The full reference listing for each article is provided, followed by a description of the article in an annotated bibliography. Let's conclude by reviewing what I covered in this lesson. A literature review is an analysis and evaluation of existing information on the research topic. Begin your literature search by identifying terms from your research topic, research question, and hypothesis. Once you have located your material, organize it into theme groups. When writing the literature review, utilize good transition statements to weave your articles together. And finally, a literature review and annotated bibliography are not the same. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this lesson. I hope you now have a better understanding of how to create a good literature review.